but a pleasure now to welcome in uh, the head coach of the Utah Grizzlies, Ryan Kanasiewicz, uh, to the show. Coach, good morning. Thanks. You got out of bed early today. Should we expect you to have a lackluster day? No, I'm in, in the gym at the Maverick Center right now. So, <laughs> You know, it it's funny. You're actually the perfect guy because I thought one of the more interesting things we saw at practice yesterday is – you know, you really you you got really fired up for the first time. We hadn't seen that from you in the first you know two days of, of you know of of training camp. But talk about talk about that fine line that you as a coach walk because if you're getting fired up every day and you raise your voice or you're you know we talk we're talking about accountability with athletes. Like at some point, doesn't that fall on deaf ears if that's how you are constantly handling things? That's that's what I believe in. Um, if you're screaming, yelling at them every day. I mean, it's going to be one in one ear, out the other. Um, yesterday, you know, we had a had a bunch of returning guys that uh, went third in the drill and screwed it up. So uh, that really pushes my buttons, and it takes a lot to get me fired up. But uh, you saw a little bit of it yesterday. It does take a lot to get you fired up. And one of the things that, and I think you and I have talked about this on the show last time you were on, but. One of the things that I, I find so refreshing about your style is that you are pretty level-headed. I mean, it seems like you you understand that there are going to be good shifts and bad shifts. So I wonder through training camp here, and granted, it's only been the first three days, but through the first three days, are you happy with the effort that you've seen from your guys? I'm extremely happy. I mean, even yesterday up, up to that last drill that we had, everything's been pretty, pretty good. Obviously, it's never going to be perfect. Um, there's, it's a game of mistakes, you know. Guys are going to make mistakes constantly, and if you're jumping down their, <clears throat> jumping down their throat, you know, any chance you have, it's just, it's going to take away their creativity and their confidence. Yeah, and I, I think that's that's a very interesting word you just used there, creativity, because I think one of the things that really stands out about this team is you have a lot of guys who who understand how good this team should be. You have a lot of guys that understand that there are expectations um, for this club this year. I mean, our, our I, I would imagine that you're you're fired up as a coach to see your guys understanding that and embracing that and then putting in the work on the ice to, to get ready to perform at that level. Yeah, and I think you see that uh, first and foremost with how how professional these guys are and how they took care of themselves in the summer. You know, uh, a lot of these guys, some of them work in the summer, but you can tell, you know, that I don't think we have a guy in camp that's out of shape right now and, and it shows in our pace every day. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think there's any doubt in talking to your guys. Every one of them has talked about, um, you know, uh, you know, about being in shape. And I, I, I think one of the things you really were ready for, and every guy I think has said to to us as we have talked to them, hey, we knew that we were playing at pace. We knew that there was going to be a certain intensity. I mean, how much communication was there, or you know, how how did you get these guys ready mentally for the camp that you that you are putting on right now? Um, I think obviously with a lot of returning guys, they know what to expect from me and, you know, the new guys coming in and just, you know, we talk in the summer about, you know, being professionals and, and, and showing up into camp. Uh, our biggest thing is we want to hit the ground running, right? Where we got so many returning guys, um, you know, come, come next Friday, uh, we should just kind of turn things over from last year is what, what the hope is here. Yep, next Friday, obviously, the 21st opening night uh, at the Maverick Center. Make sure you get to utahgrizzlies.com to get your opening night tickets, really opening weekend tickets. It's going to be a great weekend of hockey. But let me ask you about your your forward group. Um, you know, obviously, that is – I mean, you have a lot of speed up front. You have a lot of guys that are familiar with your system. Are you happy with the way that those guys are performing now? Do you see, as a coach who's got to make some tough decisions, because it looks like you have a lot of competition, are you happy with the way that that forward group is coming together? Yeah, and, you know, we've met with, with everyone over the last couple of days, and the best thing they can do, and I know it's, it's tough on them, but it's a compliment to them, is when they make our job difficult. You know, when we have to make some tough decisions here come next week, uh, it's going to be difficult, some conversations, but, you know, the, the competition that we have in our camp right now, especially up front, is, is fantastic. Yeah, I, I, would, uh, I would say you have quite a bit of competition. Are you, seeing, are you seeing separation there? Like, obviously, you just said that it's difficult, but are you as a coach and are you and Jared Pike, your assistant coach, are you guys seeing that kind of separation? Are you able to start grouping those guys out a little bit? You can start seeing it, uh, 
you know, one guy that's really sticked out is uh, or stuck out is Taron Pfizer. Um, he's his pace out there and his his skill is pretty elite. Um, we also we're gonna have a couple couple guys coming in from. We got Tyler Penners driving in today, uh, and then a couple other potential forwards coming in next week. So that's just gonna bolster a group and make decis- decisions even harder. Well, you know, it's interesting you bring up Tyler's name because that's a guy that you were able to count on night in and night out last year. I mean, what does it mean to have him back when you know that you can pretty much pencil his name on the card every single night? He's just he's a he's a consummate professional. Um, you know, he, he does things the right way. And obviously playing all 90, 90 games, was it for us last yeah. year? Yeah. Uh, a lot of hockey, but um, you can see the growth in his game. And, you know, he was, he was off at Manitoba camp and that was well-deserved. And uh, all the reports back from there is, is he did a fantastic job up there. So I'm looking forward to seeing him. Are you talk about your goaltending a little bit? Obviously, you know you are you're a guy that um, you know. I see that you you watch that closely. I mean, you have two guys that are, are competing. I mean, Garrett Metcalf, who's a local guy, but um, you know, are you happy with what you're seeing competitively between your two goaltenders? Yeah, uh, you know, talking with Garrett yesterday, he looked a little tired. Uh, um, we're not used to having just two goalies here in camp. You typically we have three, but those guys have worked extremely hard and. Uh, you know, they're both six foot four. They move extremely well. Uh, and I, I can't wait to drop the puck tomorrow night in Boise. Yeah, Lucas Parikh's a problem, though, man. He hurt my feelings yesterday. He said some critical things in my Jordans and, you know, like that. He's a Jordan guy. I'm a Jordan guy. He did not like the threes that I had on yesterday. I'm really going to need you to crack the whip on him and get him in, on, get him in line on my shoe collection, Coach, because I'm pretty upset about that. I, I don't know anything about fashion or clothes. <laughs> He's, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have you know, to the funny thing is, yourself. like, we put on the on you, you put up video of him, and and fans from different cities where he's played are commenting on the Grizzlies Twitter about him as a guy. Like, he's an interesting guy. He's a really big personality, obviously. But what what about him? Why is why did you bring him here? Uh, you know, talking with Colorado, they thought he was a very intriguing uh, prospect. Um, you know, he was with the LA system and, and that kind of ran its course, but he's only 22 years old and, and goalie age, that's extremely young. So uh, for him to, uh, to come in here and, you know, take a, sh- take a chance on himself. I, I think we're going to see, I mean, we saw it last year with, uh, with how well he, he played in Rapid City and, you know, we're hoping he can, he can build on that and just continue to grow. Well, and I think that's one of those positions, Ryan, where really, I, I don't have to tell you this, it feels like you get a lot of turnover there. There's a lot of movement um, in that. I mean, you know, Garrett Metcalf's a really good example of that. You know, he, he goes up to the A last year. Obviously, he, he ended a little early with the shoulder, but it, it seems like that is that is constantly in flux uh, between the pipes for you guys. Like, how challenging is that when when a lot of times you have movement at that position? You know, it, it's it's part of the league. Um, there's there's a ton of movement day to day in our league. Uh, goalies being one of them. But uh, you know, we were lucky last year, and we've been really lucky to have Garrett over the last few years to be kind of our our backbone there. And uh, you know, I was really happy to see him get rewarded last year and get a chance in the American League. And you know, let's be honest, that position's it's the toughest position. You know, goal gets scored on him. You can always blame the goalie. You know, he, he always yeah. should have thought that. So um, it, it, it's a position that uh, maturity really helps your development. So, you know, as these guys age, they're like a fine wine, you know. As they age, they only get better. Yeah, absolutely. Ryan Kanaswich, the head coach of the Utah Grizzlies, is our guest here on the Monty Show. Um, speaking of tickets, you guys are going up to Idaho. Uh, we'll see you there Friday night, but then you guys play in Ogden, uh, at the Weber County ice sheet on Saturday. That's an interesting, that's an interesting opportunity, uh, you know, to be in the community. Um, you know, it's a great, it's a double header. It's a $15 ticket. It's really easy for people to get into that. I have to imagine you guys are looking forward to, you know, to getting back into your fan base, to seeing your fans in person. Are, are you guys looking forward to that game in Ogden? Yeah, you know, last year was our first year doing it there, and, and the crowd was fantastic. I mean, even the guys were saying how, you know, how revved up it was there, and uh, it's it's a little different uh, being on the Olympic sheet, obviously, but you know, we're, we're practicing on one all week, so you know, we should be uh, should be able to use our speed and and you know, put on a good show. 
By the way, speaking of uh, ice rinks, that uh, that little barn called the Maverick Center is getting a nice little uh, facelift. Uh, it was nice to walk in yesterday and see the big video board going up. Like I, I would imagine you have to be really excited about the way that building's going to look and and I maybe performs the wrong word, but I mean that's going to be a, a, a fantastic home ice advantage for you guys. Yeah, I, obviously we haven't had one uh, in the past. It's going to be very interesting to see. Uh, just what our, our front office has in store as far as uh, in-game entertainment and stuff like that. I, it should really up the value to our game and uh, the guys are all excited talking about it. And, uh, you know, I can't wait till uh, opening night to see those boards on. Yeah, it's going to be exciting. Well, coach, good to talk to you. I appreciate your time as always. Uh, best of luck and stay healthy this weekend against Idaho. All right. Thank you. There you go. That is Ryan Kanaswich, uh, the head coach of the Utah Grizzlies. And I'll tell you what, being around them, um, you know, every day he works at a certain intensity and I give, I give Ryan a lot of credit. Like he, he asks a lot of his guys as far as conditioning and being in shape. Cause he's, he's somebody, and this is not dissimilar to BYU, yeah. frankly. Yep. It's interesting when you have that request and you hold your guys accountable to that because you look at the way his Grizzlies showed up in camp. I think he hit the nail on the head. I have been incredibly impressed with the shape that they've been in mm -hmm. because they know if they're not in shape and if they are not at peak shape the minute they step on that ice, they're probably not going to be here. Well, and that's that's kind of what I've been getting at with BYU. Like I, 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 while we're talking about health or you know whatever the factors may be, it, athletics and sports is very black and white. You're either doing the job or you're not, and and if you're you can't create an environment like with this whole Jaron being hurt and still playing him situation. Yeah. You can't create an environment where it's okay for your guy to be hurt and you're just going to keep running him out there to the point where it's going to affect your 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 playbook and your play calling and what what you're able to do. So like with the Utah Grizzlies, yeah, th those guys know coming to camp, yeah, I better damn well better be in shape because I know that Ryan Kanasiewicz is going to push the pace. And I think that that is that's the that those guys understanding that to me is just a mark of his ability to lead them properly. Cause yeah. when your leader sets a tone and you win, because again, if you don't win, who gives a damn, but when you win and you make a playoff run, that's why those guys are in shape and ready. Yeah. I think it is. I'm excited. It's great being around that team again. It's great. That organization is so community focused. Um, obviously they, they had a phenomenal year last year. I mean, they, yeah. they, the first, I mean, that's one of their most successful seasons ever, frankly, but the fact that they were able to do it and be so community focused and continue to bring in talent here and watching the avalanche last night, unfortunately smoke my Blackhawks, um, you know, watching the avalanche last night, knowing, um, how good they are. It's, it is a lot of fun to be around that club. So, Hey, by the way, in Ogden on Saturday, um, 7-10 face-off, uh, 3 o'clock face-off for the Mustangs. Um, it's 15 bucks to get in. It is a super cheap ticket. Um, and if you you look at this Utah Grizzlies team, I think you are going to see really good hockey Saturday night up in Ogden. And then next Friday, opening night for the Utah Grizzlies is going to be phenomenal. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm super excited about it. I'm ready. Uh, yeah. I'm also ready uh, to start making some locks and some picks. Yeah. Uh, here on the Monty Shield presented by the Advocates, utahadvocates.com. Um, your confidence level and your belief system on the uh, on BYU. I mean, I'm not incredibly confident that they're going to beat Arkansas. I, I mean, I have to be honest. Like, I look at, again, KJ coming back a quarterback for Arkansas. You know, you've got Rocket in the backfield. Like, they have, they're dynamic. There's no way There's no way around that. Like, Arkansas has a lot of athleticism and speed, whereas Notre Dame, like, Drew Pine can get it done, but he's not, like, a dynamic, like, game-breaking talent. Like, KJ can be that, and I think that, that, that what I'm concerned about for this defense is discipline with your assignment. When you're playing somebody who's athletic and can beat you, the way you beat them is you just do your job. If you're at the right place at the right time doing what you should be doing, typically you're going to be fine.